Hello everyone, welcome to Aliens Joy today on this beautiful but kind of chilly Saturday. I'm very excited to be here. Welcome everybody on the Win Win Women TV platform. I'm glad to be here. It's my third season. It is always so much fun. It's way more fun if I have a guest on. So today I have an amazing guest. Of course, all my guests are always amazing. And if you're watching on Roku or if you're watching on Amazon or if you're watching on Apple, please let me know that you are uh, watching and what you thought of this episode and so forth. So today I have the amazing Anna Shoup on my on my um, guest, as a guest today here. And I'm going to introduce Anna. Anna is a fellow coach. She is the founder of Summer Solstice LLC, where she works as a stress and burnout coach for high achievers and, and business owners, right? Looking to relieve stress, as we all have stress in our life, find connection, and also regain some balance. And I was going through an immense inner healing herself and self-discovery journey after she quit her six-figure Fortune 500 job in corporate America as HR. And as a consultant at 26, she started her own coaching business. So in her practice, Anna helps people feeling like they've hit a breaking point. Sometimes we have people that are hitting a breaking point and we need all, we all need a coach, I always say. So I have a coach, you have a coach, we all need a coach. If you have a breaking point in your life or career, Anna helps people discover their purpose, boost their confidence and become the most authentic versions of themselves by utilizing a holistic approach of the mind-body-spirit wellness connection. So Anna, tell me a little bit about who is Anna. Welcome to my show today. I'm so glad you're here, darling. Who is yes, Anna? Yes, thank you. So glad to be here, Alien. Really appreciate it. But like Alien said, my name is Anna Chippa, uh, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. But now I live in the good old Dallas, Texas. So really enjoy the warm weather down here and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I've been doing stress and burnout coaching and also career transitions coaching uh, for a couple of years now. And before then, I did human resources consulting. So I worked with EY, Ernst & Young, and helped people with their different strategies, training and development, things like that. And, you know, I took it on my heart, really thought about what my passions and my purpose was. And I was like, you know especially after COVID happened, I was like, you know, I really want to pursue coaching. And that's when I really thought, man, if I can transform organizations, what would it mean to transform somebody's life? So that's what got me on the coaching journey. And now I've been doing it, have been loving it. It has been such a blessing in more ways than one. And yeah, that's basically me. I love to exercise. I love to just dive into my faith, sing, dance, all those things, and just have a good time. So that is Anna. You look like you sing and dance a lot, and you're just full of energy. Oh, and yes. Up. And when I met you, it was at a speakers convention in Dallas. And I thought, yes. that is energy. That's just a bundle of life, that girl. I got to have her on my show. So I <laughs> love it. I love it. I love Thank it. you. So, was there Thank one you. specific moment? that you all of a sudden, you know, what happened? What is kind of your story behind this one? Like, I'm going to quit this. I'm out. I am, you know, you said something on your website and you described it really well. Kind of experience burnout, things like that. What what happened altogether that you said, I'm going to serve others and not be in corporate America anymore? Yeah. So, you know, when it came to stress and burnout, I've hit it in a few different areas in my life. So it actually all started in college. So in college, I had five jobs on top of schoolwork. So I was basically working 80 hours a week, and that doesn't even include homework. So I think then that's really where I learned work-life balance. Like, okay, I have to set these boundaries, especially if I'm going into a corporate America role. And when I did, I did set those boundaries for myself. But despite all the things, there was still something missing, something a little bit missing. And it was really when, like I said before, COVID hit, because when I was in human resources consulting, I was traveling every Monday through Thursday. I was getting hotel mm. points and airline miles, going to these cool places. But once COVID hit, has all that stuff was gone and it really got me down to the nuts and bolts of what the job was. And, you know, I thought to myself, I was like, man, I feel like I'm I'm trying and I'm trying to be involved in all these things, but I'm still not happy. Like really, what is the missing piece? And that's when I did, you know, some soul searching within myself to 
really start thinking about like, what is it that Anna wants? Not what does everyone want of Anna, but what is it that Anna wants? And I dove into my passions, my values, my strengths, and then even some of my struggles to really come to this consensus of like, wow, coaching would be a really cool thing. But it doesn't stop there. Like when I hit, when I decided that I wanted to do coaching, right, um, that was back in like June of 2020, but I hit so many self-limiting beliefs. Like I'm not good enough. I'm going to fail. I'm not going to succeed. Like what is entrepreneurship? You have a communications and writing degree. You are not getting into entrepreneurship. And that's where I accidentally fell into an inner healing process. At the time I was dating someone and it wasn't going the greatest. And I decided to go and enroll in this program. It was called Alive and Free. And they basically, it was for, you know, Christian women looking Mm -hmm. for healing about around dating and relationships. I was like, that is so me. And when that happened, um, I really got to experience just a lot of love and connection in the places that I didn't. So I didn't realize how much self-criticism, perfectionism, self-hatred were really the drivers in my life. And that spilled onto other people and my work and everything like that. So when I really went through that process, it took me about a year and a half or so to really learn what self-love and self-worth was. Then I actually started getting the confidence to be like, hey, I can do this. I can do this coaching thing. So I ended up taking an, more of an internal role at EY rather than doing human resources consulting for other clients. I was a staff consultant, so I got those people onto client projects. And from there, I was kind of building my business on the side, but it did get to a point about like a year later where I was like, you know what? Like, I can't do this job. Like this job was even worse than the last one, unfortunately, just because there was a lot of, you know, shared services roles. You're just do to do on the computer all the time and uh, not interacting with people as much. So I was like, man, if I'm building up this business and I love it, why not dive my passions and my purpose into this? And it was at a time, excuse me, in my career, in my life where I could take that risk. You know, I was wasn't dating anyone at the time. I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. I was like, you know what? This is a time to take that risk and take what I earned from EY to really invest in myself and say yes to myself for the first time, like one of the first times to really do that. And that's when just like through a lot of prayer, calculated risk, of course, working with my finances, that's when I decided to make the jump in June of 2022. So it really was like this two-year process of so much self-discovery, self-learning, compassion, love, and that in and of itself really helped me overcome that burnout, that stress. And of course, it's still a work in progress, right? Like Just like we all aren't going to be perfect. So you know, you continue to learn those things. But at the end of the day, like that's when I wanted to focus on high achievers and business owners like me who are just like, I know that I meant for more, but I don't know what this means because I spend too much time pouring into everybody else's cup but my own. So that's kind of what got me to where I was and stress and burnout coaching in particular. I love it. I love it. I love your story. And you yeah. are young in my eyes, right? I can adopt you as my daughter, but if you're and you're just wise in this sense of doing it already, doing this, the, the self-exploring, doing the growth, you know, doing self-development, yeah. just recognizing the things that you run into because it is good that you do that right now. Because as you say, we really never stop growing and changing and try to no. experience, you know, life. And uh, as I said in my book, life doesn't get any easier, but you get better at it every time. Right. If you start already with that growth and with self-development, that's amazing because, you know, you can help others. You are already just, you know, exploring, studying, reading the things that you need to do. And that so that way you can help others. So I love that. Yeah. What is your, um, yeah, so, you know, anxiety, burn out depression I just did a course about these three things so many people suffer from that I've worked with so many people that say I have anxiety right now and the stress level of course in the country is high all over the world is high so I think that coaching is really going to even explode even more right like I said I think that everybody needs a coach and I've been working with somebody for at least two years I've had several amazing 
people in my life, amazing mentors, one is listening today, people with a lot of wisdom. There is just, who is a couple of, give me a couple of examples of people that you love to listen to and that have been mentors for you. Yeah, that's a really great question. So when it comes to mentors, actually, when I did my inner healing program, it was that Christian women's program I was talking about. It's called Alive and Free. And it was run by two Christian, or I'm sorry, two Christian people. So like a husband and a wife, it was a couple. And for them, or I should say for me, they have been such an inspiration because it's been so beautiful to really see what divine masculinity and divine femininity looks like. And they're very, I, I love that they're just trailblazers in that sense, just very, um, they're unique. They tell it like the, like it is. They're very real. They're very vulnerable in the stories and the struggles that they've gone through, but they do it in a way that's just like so quirky and so fun. But then at the same time, they just love the Lord so deeply and they're so devout. So it's just really amazing and beautiful to see that and to undergo a program that has helped me with that. So I, you know, I've listened to their podcasts. I've listened to their videos. I actually did another coaching program through there where I got my coaching certification, um, doing and using the modalities that they do, which a lot of it is like spiritual encounters, more of the supernatural side of the faith, which has just been such a blessing in inner child therapy. That's basically what it is in short mm. term, um, in the secular term. But, you know, for them, it's just, or for me, they have been such a great inspiration in my life to be able to learn and model off of. Yeah, that's great. And I love the title of it. And I love the facts. I want to ask you this because this is something that I just kind of came to my mind. Um, it's a, there's a different generation, right? And there's, there's, there's my generation that the, the generation that didn't talk, I didn't talk for at least 20 years of my life and let alone about myself. Right. Um, yeah. and we were in, and we were born in the concept of helping others and serving and just you come last. So there's a big difference with your generation now. Do you think and this is just kind of a thinker. We can just kind of brainstorm on this. Do you think it's easier for women now or is there just an overload on choices that makes it a little bit more difficult? What do you think? And what do you experience with the people that you work with, with your with your clientele? Yeah, I think with this, you know, with every generation, there is some sort of struggle, right? So I don't think it's necessarily easier or harder for one generation over another. It's just what they're facing. So for example, in older generations, that idea to have a voice, right, is something that was a little bit harder, especially when, you know, before, if we're talking about women entrepreneurs, right, like there weren't really any woman entrepreneurs, like women weren't able to hold their own bank accounts until 1970s Correct. or something yeah. like that. Like that's, yeah. that's insane. Right. But now we're, you know, luckily, fortunately, we're past those times where women can do that. But I think to your point, one of the things that I think youth and young adults struggle with, and this is something I, I work, especially with youth and young adults, just because of, you know, my generation and yes. things like that, able to resonate with them a lot more is, you know, although we now we have the voice, but now with social media and technology, our voice is so lost. And I think what happens a lot, especially for those who are in high school, they fall into the trap of comparison and yeah. comparison is the thief of joy. And sometimes that inhibits them to say, well, my voice isn't going to matter anyway, so why even say it? And then also, I think because there are so many different messages and signals and information out there, I think people kind of get lost in who am I? Like, who am I really? And yeah. that's something I help a lot. Uh, I help with a lot with my clients is like, okay, what is your purpose? Like, who are you really? And who do you want to become? And what are the blockers that are getting in the way? So I always say like clarity, confidence, commitment, like let's get some clarity on who you are and who you want to become. Let's become confident by breaking some of those self-limiting beliefs. And then how do we actually commit by building healthy routines and structures and balance around there? So again, mm -hmm. I think it's different problems in a sense or different issues and struggles, but you know, it's, what is my voice? How do I actually say my voice and how do I have the confidence to own it and love it? 
Yes, I love that. And I love the yeah. three C's. They're always great, right? And yeah. I, I said so many times, sometimes, well, so many times I also said one of my quotes, it's like, you know, when you're young, you think everything is clear and clarity comes with wisdom and age, right? But that's, that's good right. when you're steering people into, because it's all, I always believe that, and I didn't know that either. I had no clue. I found out a little bit later in life that everything is about that purpose. Why are we here and what makes us so mm -hmm. unique, right? And yes. so many people are going into that. And you mentioned it as well. I've been through that imposter syndrome, not feeling good enough, you know, limiting beliefs, like why me, you know, why should I right. step to the plate? But on the other hand, I always had that intrinsic feeling that I needed to teach and help. Right. I always did that. So first right. a lifetime of fitness career. And that's 10 years ago that became a life coaching career as well, because I started helping uh -huh. people with anxiety and, you know, that purpose and why it's still in my age group, the people that are in their midlife, the ladies that I work with that are going through a divorce, you know, the mm -hmm. children, loss of a loved one, the children are gone maybe and have no clue what to do all of a right. sudden right all that search for purpose yeah. what is it that you see yourself with your purpose and it's amazing that you can start with the younger generation because i believe we all need help but they need help and especially <laughs> with that peer pressure and with all that stuff you know around what's yeah. going on in this world so yeah step into that why and step into that purpose and uniqueness how do you find people i know you're very you are very opera and I love that amen you're operating from faith-based right yeah. god has definitely a unique purpose for all of us our higher power however you want to call yeah. that if we're doing that holistic approach in a sense of yes we are unique and we are having a, a place in the universe how do you convince people of that what do you tell them that where how do they need to see that yeah so when it comes to finding your purpose i feel like especially as we get older and the older and older we get, we deviate more and more away from our childlike selves, like that childlike wonder. And when we're talking in the context of faith, especially like the Lord wants us to be his children, like he sees us as his sons and daughters of God. And I think so often we forget that because we get inundated with what other people say or our work and things like that. And, you know, we just get lost in the mix. So oftentimes when I ask people a lot about their purpose and what they think it is for them. Again, I talk about a lot about their values, mm -hmm. their strengths, yeah. their passions, and then their struggles. And the struggles is more so for awareness so that we can minimize those struggles and let the other three shine. Yeah. And with the passion, sometimes I have people who really struggle with well, I don't know what I'm good at, or I don't know who I am, and I don't know what I'm passionate about. So when it comes to passions, I tell people, or I ask people the question, like, what was it that you love to do as a kid? Yeah. Maybe you like to do art, maybe you like to sing and dance, maybe you like mm -hmm. to read, and how often do you do that now? And I can't tell you how many times people have told me, like, oh my gosh, I don't do that at all. I'm like, yeah, you need to start baking that back in, not in a sense of, you know, oh, my purpose is singing and dancing, for example, yeah. right? But yeah. it helps kind of reignite that momentum in you to say, oh yeah, like this is who I am. This is what I like. And this is what gets me excited. And then I help with, you know, when it comes to values and strengths and things like that, I do some assessments. I actually talk to that person one-on-one. -on -one. We find a lot of common themes and actually do an exercise called the purpose quadrant. But basically the output of that exercise is recognizing those four different areas. And then from there, creating a purpose statement. So it's kind of like a company mission statement, but yeah. this is like a mission statement for your life. So Personal. for me, for example, mine is like to heal and grow through mind, body, spirit, wellness, and connection by overcoming self inner criticism and shame. So yeah. When I look at that, and then this is what I ask people when they think about their purpose is, you know, that, can it apply to both yourself and others? Is it personal and professionally applied? Like, can you apply it in both of those contexts? And is it specific? So by doing those three things, it's not just, oh, well, I'm here to make a difference or, oh, well, I want to make people happy. I'm like, 
a lot of us want to do that, right? Like, let's actually go a little bit more granular and ask some of those deeper questions. That's usually like the why or the mm -hmm. outcome of living out your purpose statement. But let's actually find out what this purpose is. So again, it's just a combination of asking some of those questions, having them think about what it was that they did in their childhood that they loved and who they were. Because like, like I said, I think sometimes over age or over time, excuse me, we put on all these different masks, right? We put all these different masks on rather than getting back down to just our true authentic selves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that. And you're doing a lot of the same things as we coaches do, right? We look for strength. We look for value. We look for purpose. We look for that excitement. I always say, totally. what, do you, what do you want to get up for in the morning, right? Yeah. It needs to be something that drives you and it gives you energy totally. and it makes you excited about the day and it makes you totally. just get out of bed early. Um, one of the things that you tipped on that a lot of the younger generation or the younger generation definitely is dealing with, I think, is what I talked so much in my book about that I stuck in that for 20 years. I was living in a framework of expectation of the outer world, right? Waiting yeah. for something or somebody or, you know, a happening in the event to make me happy, right? Not finding happiness inside, comparing, trying to live up to other people's expectations. And with that, putting a lot of expectation on myself. So yes. that was just kind of like the drive, the red thread through my book, right? How to let that go and just come into your unique self. And that is very important through coaching. I think a lot of people, I work with a lot of counselors, I work with a lot of therapists, but then yeah. they move people to me to go into that future and find that mission statement for self. Absolutely. Where do you want to be in five or 10 years? I love yeah. that. And so good that you're doing that and that you're right out there. Um, tell me a little bit about your balance, work, life, personal kind of thing. How do you balance it? And and what do you do that you would love to do if you're not coach? What do you do if you're not coaching? Yeah, so one of the things I keep in check with myself, but I always, always tell my clients too, is just giving an honest look and assessment of yourself of where is your work versus play versus rest? Like what is the distribution of work between the three? And then from there, how do you maximize your energizers and minimize your drainers, right? So yeah. that's kind of the way to start creating that work-life balance. And those things that energize you are probably things from your childhood, things you haven't done in a long time. And maybe minimizing a drainer looks like Maybe it's getting a new job. Maybe it's having your spouse do the dishes, like whatever it may be. But, you know, what's so important is to really pour into yourself so that you can pour into others. And I think for me, what that's looked like over time in, you know, especially in seasons where I've had more of that work-life balance is I love having routine in the morning, like being able to wake up go to the gym, journal, pray. Like for me, that really sets me up for my day. I love, you know, mind, body, spirit. I love being able to do those things for myself before I start getting into my work day. So that for me just really sets me up. And then when it comes to work-life balance, I, you know, it's kind of funny. I do things that I enjoy in both contexts. So an example of this is right now, I also work part-time. So aside from building my business, I also work, I have two part-time jobs, but one of them is um, <clears throat> working at Fitness Connection at the daycare center. So I work with like three to 11 year olds and just take care of them while their parents are going to work out. And what's so awesome about it is that I'm literally getting paid to do what I love. Like I love being with kids. Like they give me so much joy. They're just, they're awesome. And honestly, I think they teach me more than I teach them. So to have that sort of reminder, and again, it's technically work because I'm getting paid, but I get so much life out of it. So when I think about work-life balance, one of the things I keep in mind is, okay, why am I going to this activity? Why am I doing this job? Why am I doing this? Like having that purpose in mind, my end goal, or I call it the North Star, right? Mm -hmm. And then any decision or activities and things that you include, that's when you kind of decipher, okay, is this in alignment or out of alignment? So again, I love doing those things. Fitness Connection has been awesome. But then of course, I love going to concerts, traveling like that really gives me life and to be able to do work while I travel when I'm working remotely 
that's awesome. And to visit my family, that gives me life. So, you know, just so many ways in which, you know, that kind of happens. And of course, exercising, fitness, sports, like I'm just, I'm all about exercising and nutrition yes. and things like that. So um, yeah, I would say for me, those well. are some of those things and things that people can think about for themselves. Like how can they actually hit two birds with one stone, but then also maximize those energizers and minimize those drainers. Yes, I, lo I love that because I can just see it. I can see you just skipping through town, right? And exercising, fitness, yeah. being with the kids. I love it. And yes. it's just one of the best things that sets us off. So I that's I even yes. teach my clients that a morning routine, stability, discipline, you know, doing the same thing over and over. I yeah. remember I went, uh, especially I guess from your age to about 20 years after that, through this resentment uh, phase in my life where I thought that anything that was a habit was boring and anything yeah. that you know like please don't have you know something that repeats itself right <laughs> and just everything had to be entertainment all the time and yeah. definitely not but I've learned so much from just being you know being at home and doing the same things in the morning and set yourself yeah. up really amazing action day once you pray once you meditate for a little bit once you do your exercise you get your body to wake up all these things oh and having that discipline and that routine is amazing i yes. love that you said that because i think that's one of the best things that i have learned over well now another 20 years right but just really coming yeah. into that grounding moment in the morning and then going after it whatever it is yes i yes. love that. i love that where is your uh, i wanted to ask you um mm -hmm. For your clients, for instance, do you have one of these amazing success stories that I, I saw it on your website, but I want you to tell <laughs> just people that just love to work with you and uh, just give me a story of something crazy that happened and changed the names the whole bit. Oh, gosh, I have to think of like a particular story in which things I know happen. that people love to work with you. I would, <laughs> I would, I'm going to yes. adopt you as my daughter. I need a daughter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I love yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think one of the ones was um, she actually went through my group coaching program that I have and her brother provided the referral slash recommendation. I knew him. We, he, we actually went to the same alma mater, funny enough, and he lives here in Texas. So funny enough, small world kind of thing. But he was saying, well, you know, she needs she's really overwhelmed and she's like looking for a job. She doesn't really know what she wants to do in her job and things like that. And it was so amazing to see her growth because when I saw her day one, you know, and we were starting to try to tap into some of like the grounding, the meditation, like what is your purpose? Like asking just some of those questions about, you know, value, strengths, whatever. She's like, I, I just remember her shutting down. She's like, I, I, I can't do this. Like I have to stop. And I'm like, okay, like no problem. Right. And, you know, over time, um, she really realigned to her purpose. It's not that she ever had to change jobs where she thought that for so long, but now she's like, oh, okay, wait, I actually do want to be a violin teacher. Right. And then five weeks, not even like five weeks within the program, she ended up getting a job. And even her brother reached out to me saying like, Anna, like, and this was probably week three, okay, of like the 16 week program that I had. But he's like, Anna, I don't know what you're doing with my sister, but I am just seeing a turn. Like there is a definite shift in how she's showing up. And, you know, so beautiful to see that. But I think even more so just over time, how she was just really able to open up and like love herself because it came you know, a lot of it came from, you know, being really overwhelmed, like wanting to fit in somebody else's box rather than being her own box. But my favorite also was um, <clears throat> her connection with the Lord. She was a person who's like, yeah, like I'm kind of open to faith. I'm not really like, you know, in it, that kind of thing. But as we were working together, you know, we, again, we went through these spiritual encounters where we learned how to like use meditation, get grounded, but then actually start to engage our senses so that we can hear the Lord, see the Lord, like feel him, just take him, taking him back to when we were really little, when we experienced some sort of pain and having his compassion and love come in there and fill our hearts that haven't been filled for 
30 years or so, right? Um, and I just remember we were working together and she's like, oh my gosh, like I, I can I can hear him, like I can see him, like what the heck? Like I've been trying to do this for so long. And I think since then she's just been so much more open to the concept of faith and what that looks like. And, you know, with my clients, I, I work with both believers and non-believers, right? I think it, sure. it's, I, I don't discriminate or anything yeah. like that, but for them to realize themselves, like, oh my gosh, like, wait, I'm hearing the Lord. Like sometimes I don't even say the word Holy Spirit, Lord God, like I, I don't say it unless right. they're open to it. And, you know, just to see her transformation in those different ways, um, and like the, I, I even remember the physical ailments that she had, like neck tension, like, you know, her heart was really tight. And then we worked together and she's like, oh my gosh, like I'm releasing this stuff. Like wh what is happening? So it really was just this mind, body, spirit integration. And now when she was so worried about what her future looked like with her significant other. Now she's more noticing her language and managing her mind around some of that and noticing like, no, like we're, we're good where we're at and it'll just happen over time. So i say that it's a long kind of story, but to see her transformation in like multiple different dimensions, like just over the course of was a 16 weeks together or so a little bit more a little bit less things like that um it was just such a gift to see and mm -hmm. I just I think she's awesome I'm like yes keep going like keep killing it so yeah, I'm great. very um very excited for her very happy for her and just that has nothing to do with me but I was like all literally by the grace of God and everything like that so yeah but you were the vessel there and you were just helping <laughs> right and so that's such an amazing thing I always say it's not me you're doing the work right yes. to the client or to my patients and I, I totally so many success stories. I work with people even in addiction recovery for eight plus years as you know, a counselor. It's just really to see that people come into the moment and come into the now and not and not they're not afraid of the the the, the future anymore, right? It has a yeah. lot of hope and faith and knowing where you are at and it's okay, you're okay in the present moment, you're okay being perfectly imperfect, as we say, right? So yeah. all the good stuff, great story. Yes. Yes. I want to yeah, kind of yeah. have a couple of minutes with you to conclude our live version today. And then we're going to stay on, by the way. So if people are here live with us, then we can have a little Q&A that will not be recorded. But um, I would love to know from you if you have these, well, give me one or two nuggets of advice for the audience. Some Anna stuff. Some Anna stuff. You already gave a lot away. But what would you say to the audience? And then also, of course, I want to find out where we can find you. What are you up to and where can we find you? Yeah. yeah. Stuff. So two pieces of advice I have is always say yes to you. Say yes to self-investment, into personal growth, into personal development, because the more that you're investing in yourself, you're going to be able to double that, quadruple that into other people. And, you know, I think a lot of people are really nervous, like, oh, I don't know if I have the time. I don't know if I have the money, you know, but I'm like, I promise you, like, make that commitment to yourself because it's so easy for us to prioritize other things. And the more that we do that for ourselves, always going to get a positive ROI. So that's why I say when I, what I mean when I say, say yes to you. I love so, that. yes, that's my first yes one. To you. I love that. Yes. Say yes, yes to you. Yes. Right. I love that. Um, yeah. And then my other piece of advice is, and I, I know this was very helpful for me when I was going through my inner healing process. Like if you're someone who feels like you're overwhelmed or you're just really hard on yourself or perfectionistic like I was, is just writing down like your biggest fears but then reversing them into positive affirmation. So for example, one of the ones I believed for such a long time is I'm not good enough, but reversing that into I am worthy and loved and using those positive affirmations, literally like putting them on a sticky note in your mirror. I literally still have ones in my medicine cabinet 
and look at yourself each and every day in the mirror and say those things out loud. Say them in prayer, say them while you're driving, you know, those grounding forces that can help start creating new neurological pathways in your brain Absolutely. so that you're starting to not only notice your language and how you talk to yourself, because how you talk to yourself is how you talk to others, but how you're actually changing that language. Yes. Thank you so much. Isn't it amazing that our brain can do all that stuff? That was just what I didn't know so long ago. So it's wonderful to find out that you can man manipulate your brain, right? It's like a muscle. You can train it to think different. You can train it to wake up. And I love that as well. Of course, I have a list of 10 affirmations every day and I repeat it multiple times a day to myself because I yes. had that place and now I'm in that place. I don't want to lose it because it's <laughs> yeah. awesome you shine honey thank you so much for being my amazing guest today tell the audience where we can find you um so places where you can find me so my website is summer solstice coach.com s-o-u-l-s-t-i-c-e so summer solstice coach.com you'll see a little bit about my story you can book some time with me as well um, currently I'm connecting with a lot of parishes and ministries, especially for youth and young adults. So not only for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but also for speaking opportunities, mm -hmm. keynotes, retreats. So if that even sounds like someone you're interested in or, you know, organization wise, like you would love to have some holistic healing and whatnot, I'd love to have a conversation with you and even meet you in person, especially if you're in the Dallas, Texas area, or if I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, and you're also so in Cleveland, Ohio. Awesome. I'd love to meet you. Um, but yeah, Summer Solstice Coach is my website. You can also catch me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the things. And I'd love to connect. I love it. I love it. And of course, all your information will also be in the show uh, title, right? So underneath, today I kind of called it, what did I call? Uh, a fortune cookie became fortunate right so yes. people can go like well what's this all about i want to find out and they'll find out yes. on your website uh solstice say that one more time say that one more time your website oh summer solstice coach.com coach.com yeah. summer solstice coach.com i'm gonna wrap up the live today and i'm inviting everybody who is watching right now or live with us please stay on for a little bit of q a after otherwise i will see you next week on aliens joy i have another amazing guest next week i love it so come see me at one o'clock eleven o'clock uh, pacific one o'clock central two o'clock eastern time aliens joy every saturday so next week i'll see you for the next episode thank you so much namaste and make it a great day thank you for watching have a good one